Hey guys, welcome to a special episode of Trailer Academy. This is not like usual episode where I'll pick one trailer and then try to compare it to the game. This is kind of more like the uh, E3 special, if you guys saw that. I looked back at all the trailers that came out at E3 2013 and talked about them in mass to kind of talk about the state of trailers and uh, what they're like in the industry. And I've been thinking a lot with the next generation, you know, rapidly approaching about what trailers are gonna look like in next gen. And I know what some of you are thinking, you know, trailers are gonna change in generations, that doesn't happen. And it, it does if you think about it, especially when you think about, imagine it's 2004, and you know, you've got a PS2 and or an Xbox, and think about how trailers changed just in this generation we're leaving behind now. No trailer was in HD. That was something that actually took a long time past 2005 and 2006. A lot of Japanese companies would just give us SD trailers when we knew their games were coming out on PS3 and Xbox 360. So that took a while for the industry to really embrace and it's something that you wouldn't think of any game coming out on 360 and PS3 to not release an HD trailer today. You would certainly never see pre-order bonuses at the end of a trailer in 2004. There were no Facebook or Twitter links and you would never see something that said this trailer is composed entirely of in-game footage because you would never believe that it was or wasn't in the PS2 or Xbox era, but now that it, you know we started getting into HD and games looked a little bit more like movies, uh, that was something that uh, developers definitely felt like putting into their trailers. And finally, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but full game trailers now take up entire commercial breaks. NBC or Comedy Central will you know get a Killzone trailer and then the whole commercial break will be just that trailer and it will you know play it in its entirety. So. That's definitely something that developers and trailer houses are going to think of, or have been thinking of in this generation, um, where they know, okay, we're going to you know, be selling this to some company, it'll have to be exactly two minutes long. So if we're going to make a trailer anyway that we're going to put up on the internet, let's just make it two minutes. And that definitely changes the style of what a trailer is if it has a very specific running time. So these are some predictions that I have, six specifically, about how trailers could and probably should change moving into the next generation. Let's get started. So number one is that trailers for the game that you're playing will start to appear in the game that you're playing. And what made me think of this was Skylanders and Disney Infinity. So if you guys have been playing either of those games, when you stumble across a figure that you don't have or a place in the game that will cue a video for that figure, that's a trailer and that's a trailer that's in the game. Now in the PS2 and Xbox era, and I, I think I've seen it a couple times this gen, you would get trailers on the game, like if you went to the main menu, you'd be like, oh, you can watch some other trailers from Sierra or Activision, and uh, you could watch them there, but these will be a little sneakier. And the example I would give you is, say, you know, Saints Row 5 has a character that you can unlock via DLC, or has uh, an expansion that's coming out uh, maybe in a couple months. And you know they'll release the trailer that'll be on game trailers, and you can you know reach on your mobile phone or on the internet. But you'll also be able to access the advertisement for that in the actual game. And I think the, that will start to become more prevalent. So you know the less time you're spending on the internet, and the more you're relying on social media to kind of deliver all of your content to you, the more uh, companies are going to have to be a little more direct with stuff. And they might even take it a step further. You might see trailers that are ingrained in games. Uh, maybe like fancy billboards for one for like Forza that has something for Killer Instinct. So I think you're going to start to see a lot more digital integration of trailers within the actual game experience so they can hit you right uh, where it counts when you're playing the game, when you're on the console, when you can possibly just click a button and immediately make that purchase. Uh, I think that's a good time to get uh, gamers and I think it's going to happen in the future. This is a big one. I think this one is probably more likely than all of the other picks uh, that I have here. And that is that your footage is going to start making it into big trailers for big games. And the reason why is because the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are both going to have video uploading systems. Killer Instinct and Knack demonstrated that uh, since the, these consoles got announced, that you just, with a push of a button, uh, you can upload a, you know, your latest Killer Instinct match to YouTube, and not only will it upload the video, it'll put a little title on it, it'll put your online profile name on it, you can do a little you know, impromptu editing with, on the Xbox One and PS4. And because of this, uh, I'm not exactly sure how legality works, but I would assume that by uploading it through the service that's supplied to you from Xbox One and PlayStation 4, that means that Microsoft and Sony own that video. So they own your footage of you doing that, so then they can repurpose that footage. Uh, and you think about it uh, the way they do um, launch trailers, so a lot of time, or like a review trailer. So after scores come out, they'll release a trailer that'll actually have the text of those scores in the, the trailer, and they usually do it on launch day if they can get some review uh, titles early. So they'll come up with that video uh, that kind of demonstrates, hey, here's some, some uh, uh, things that people think about these games that we're playing so you can go play it now. 
And once all those videos start rolling in, I'd be very surprised if Killer Instinct didn't have a fan trailer. And if they did, then that would further incentivize people to use the service to upload your videos because you never know, you might wind up in a, a trailer for um, you know, uh, a game on the Xbox One or on the PlayStation 4. So it's gonna be really interesting to see this kind of halfway point between people embracing the fact that they can put their own content up on the web, have people go to their YouTube channel or their video channel and see all of their stuff, but at the same time, you're using not only the game to supply this material, but the service that these consoles have provided to, to, to use that. And so I think um, both Microsoft and Sony are gonna utilize that, take this footage that you're freely giving them, and uh, they're gonna turn it into trailers and TV spots and uh, uh, highlight videos and stuff like that. So those are definitely coming, so look for them. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. This is something that has happened uh, in the current gen that we are in now, but is, is going to get a lot more prevalent in next gen, and that is huge trailers for mobile games which I can assure you in 2006 was not happening. And it's interesting to see how far we've come just in uh, you know, less than a decade that games like Infinity Blade 3 or Plants vs. Zombies 2 will get these huge, I mean, Plants vs. Zombies 2 had a big CG intro because the name had gotten so big to that point. And this is, this is just a mobile game. It's almost getting to the point where more money can maybe be spent on the advertising than the actual game itself. So the best example that I could think of would be uh, Angry Birds is getting its own television show. And that used to be just a mobile game. And so there's a whole you know, uh, a bunch of opportunities there for advertising. You could advertise upcoming expansion packs for uh, uh, Angry Birds in the TV show. Obviously, there will be commercials for other Rovio games that are in the commercial breaks in between the Angry Birds TV show. It really just kind of blurs the line between like what is advertising and what isn't. I was kind of, I wouldn't say disgusted, but I was like, kind of rolled my eyes when I found out they were doing an Angry Birds TV show. So it's like, what's the plot gonna be of that? Like, I know they have funny faces, but do these things really have enough personality to speak and carry on stories throughout multiple episodes? And uh, people are really excited. I mean, from what I've seen on the web, people are, are definitely looking forward to the Angry Birds show. So whether or not that actually sees the light of day, um, stuff like that, just again, really invisible media integration between the shows you're watching, the games you're playing, and you know, going on the web to find this content is gonna start to blur, and you're gonna start to see advertising just pop up in places where you haven't seen it before. <laughs> This is a little more vague, but um, also kind of uh, applies to social media and how that's gonna be you know, much more rampant. Uh, uh, you're gonna be able to access that stuff much easier on these new consoles. And that's that uh, one trailer is going to start to have to encompass multiple products. Assassin's Creed has lots of weird things that tie into their games, specifically Brotherhood. I remember when Brotherhood came out, they had a Facebook game that you could play and that would also tie into progress that you were making on the console game. And I think we maybe got, uh, got one trailer for that Facebook thing and that was just kind of a separate venture and they're like, oh, we'll make this advertisement and that will just be for that. But so many of these things are gonna pop up where possibly you know, the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Vita have the same game, but it also maybe works a little differently on both systems and then possibly has a second screen component and then maybe there's a Facebook tie-in or a Twitter contest or a website thing that you can access via mobile. And all of these things are generally a part of the whole experience. So when you release a trailer for something like Watch Dogs, which would probably be the best example for something like this, because this whole game is about, is uh, just digital integration and, and uh, kind of breaking down walls as far as technology is concerned, that trailers for these games will have to encompass all sorts of stuff that just saying Watch Dogs will no longer necessarily apply to just the console game. It'll apply to Watch Dogs, kind of the whole universe of all of the different games that you can play, all the different interactive experiences that you can engage in. And so I think that'll start to get more confusing and you'll start to see trailers that uh, they have to challenge themselves to not just make a trailer for a game, but a trailer that covers and sells the entire universe surrounding the game. The implications of this are obvious, but what happens next is even worse. This might not happen, but I think it would be super cool. And this is purely based on technology and technology that exists today, but is still being refined and is something that uh, kind of like motion evolved during this generation, we're going to see evolve in this next generation. And that is uh, virtual reality, uh, Oculus Rift, stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a rumor that Sony's gonna build something to be competitive in that market. And if they released media for that, that wasn't necessarily tied to a game, but advertised a game, it'd be hard to call it a trailer. But again, that's, that's why these lines are gonna blur. I mean, technically, it would be a trailer if you were to release a demo that you could use in Oculus Rift, but not play, but watch. So a good example would be something like Gran Turismo or Forza. So say Forza's like, okay, we're coming out Forza 6 on Xbox One, 
and uh, we have this integration with Oculus Rift where if you want you can check out this demo of this track in Forza. You can't control the car, but you can sit in the car, look around and see the whole environment. It's basically 3D trailers, trailers that you can live in. Um, trailers that are, you know, worlds that are prefabbed uh, experiences, uh, just videos that you're watching, but you're actually in that experience. So again, it's, it's, it's not a trailer, it's not a game, it's kind of in the middle, and it's certainly not something we're gonna see for months, you know, if not years, but um, it's something that sounds kind of cool. I'd be really interested uh, if I was super excited about a game, if, you know, there was a uh, uh, explorable Los Santos map uh, before Grand Theft Auto V came out via Oculus Rift. I would definitely want to put that headset on and, and check that out. So be curious to see if we're going to be seeing stuff like that in the next generation. My sixth point is less of something that I predict and more of something that I hope uh, if I could give one piece of advice to uh, developers and publishers moving into the next generation as far as not just trailers, but trailer campaigns are concerned. And that is less is more. Um, I think uh, a lot of developers and publishers got really excited in this generation with creating media for the web. You know, it's not just that you have to make a TV commercial and put all of your funds into that. You can just cut a video and you got some gameplay and oh, we can throw another trailer up because if we have people editing it in-house, we don't have to pay another trailer company. So, hey, let's make another video just about this one specific thing. And Assassin's Creed, to bring up in a negative light, are just getting out of control with this. There have been way too many Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag trailers. And just the order of them has been really discombobulated. You know, we'll finally get to see what gameplay looks like, and then we'll get another CG trailer. That's pointless because we've already seen what the game looks like. Not only that, we've already seen you do cooler things in gameplay than you're doing in the CG movie that you're showing. And Grand Theft Auto V, which is not a next-gen game, but uh, which just made over a billion dollars quicker than anybody ever has on a game, it only had seven trailers. Just seven. And granted, Grand Theft Auto is a huge franchise, so they had their name carrying a lot of that. It might be better in the next-gen to not make so many trailers, but make fewer trailers and make them better. Really focus on those events when you can get people looking at your game. You know, those avenues like Tokyo Game Show or E3. And uh, really take advantage of those instead of just like constantly throwing videos at people because I think it can have a negative effect. It doesn't seem like it can, but people can kind of get sick of your game even though before the game comes out you think people would just be absolutely ravenous for new stuff. But you can definitely cross over that line. So I would recommend to publishers and developers to tone that back a little bit and focus more on making huge trailers so that it can kind of cut through all of the people going, you know, accessing media on their Xboxes or on their Playstations or on their Rokus or on their mobile devices or anywhere. Um, it'll make it more of an event when a trailer comes out. A lot of people will congregate more around a piece of media rather than just endlessly sharing all sorts of videos because there's a new one every week. So. Something to think about uh, in the future of next gen. And those are the six major points. There's lots of other stuff that's been floating around in my brain, but uh, those specifically I thought um, I could give examples of, and I think they're a little more likely to happen in the next gen. But uh, there's all sorts of possibilities, and I certainly want to hear what you guys have to say. So you can uh, follow me on Game Trailers VO on Twitter, or you can leave comments on this page. I will definitely be reading each and every one of them. And let me know what crazy ideas you guys think of, not just uh, you know tiny ways that they can make trailers better, make them shorter, make them longer, have less of them, but uh, like the Oculus Rift, really out of the box stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and uh, I would love to reply, and I will mention them in future episodes. And speaking of next-gen trailers, don't miss our GT Countdown for our favorite top 10 next-gen trailers, trailers for games that you will be playing in the next generation. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Trailer Academy. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.